Welcome to De-Stress Your Business, the podcast where we show you how to get incredible results in your business without constant stress. I'm Alexis Kingsbury, a serial entrepreneur and founder at Air Manual. Now, in episodes 48 and 49 of the podcast, we talked about artificial intelligence and chat GPT. Currently, hot topics and for good reason. We're entering a new age. We're moving from the information age where we've had unprecedented access to data and information to the knowledge age where artificial intelligence will process information at huge scale to give us conclusions, ideas and even decisions. The possibilities are overwhelming. The picture is constantly shifting and it's hard to know what action to take. So as business leaders, how do we begin to make practical use of the tools available to us for real business benefit. In this episode, I'll give you a way of looking at AI uh, that makes it much easier for you as a business leader to see how to make use of it and how to mitigate against its limitations. I'll also share how I expect this picture to change over time and give you some resources that you can use to prepare your business for this new age. So let's get started with why artificial intelligence has huge potential to help business leaders, particularly with their day to day. Because as business leaders, we juggle a lot of responsibilities and can often feel overwhelmed by the daily tasks. Now, of course, delegating is great and important and what you should do when growing the business uh, and achieving all the fantastic goals that you set. But it is sometimes slow, particularly when you need a lot of back and forth to get to the right answer. Now, there are so many things that artificial intelligence can help with and influence, um, but to make it easier to see some of the practical applications and limitations, um, I find it useful to think of AI as being like a super fast working junior employee who can help us get more done in less time and actually overcome some of those challenges of when you're wanting to delegate but the back and forth can be slow. Because when you use AI, they can complete repeatable tasks such as data entry, transcription, analysis, copywriting, ultimately freeing up time for business leaders to focus on the highest value activities. They can also provide valuable insights and recommendations based on data analysis. Uh, helping business leaders to make more informed decisions. And they can even be trained to provide customer support, recognize patterns, identify areas for improvement, so they can fulfill reasonably specialist roles. But I'd suggest that AI can work really, really well when it's managed as if it's a junior employee in these areas. Now, by that, I mean that you, firstly, you need to provide the creativity yourself. Don't expect uh, an artificial intelligence tool to come up with your next product uh, and what it should be and, uh, and create all of that. However, it can do a really good job of running with an idea. So um, through our testing, we found that uh, although artificial intelligence tools like ChatGPT will happily do creative writing based on very little input, the results are rarely inspiring, captivating, or moving. So to illustrate this, let's let's imagine that we're in the business of uh, selling children's books. So if we ask ChatGPT for a children's story about a deer, it'll give us something. It'll be pretty bland, um, but it will be a story about deer, probably starting with Once Upon a Time. Uh, Whereas, If we provide the creativity, if we inject suggestions, for example, if we suggest that it includes a plot to overthrow a forest-based government, um, that the prose is written in a uh, particular form like iambic pentameter or uh, or through the medium of rhyming couplets or whatever, um, and that all the names of the characters are anagrams of each other to perhaps illustrate that Uh, whoever's in power you get the same result anyway and it's just you know replacing uh, faceless uh, uh, leaders with others by giving it that kind of input you'll get something much more interesting than just a once upon a time story about deer so the opportunity here is for you to provide the creativity the ideas the thinking the the innovation the humor um, and then let the AI run with it and create something uh, that 
uh, uses what you've provided. And the great thing is, you might look at it and think, it's not that good. <laughs> I don't like the idea. Like, iambic pentameter uh, worked too poorly, or that a haiku provided too much restriction. And so as a result, I'm going to change it. The power is your ability to iterate becomes so much higher. So, um, uh, the first, like working with a junior employee, don't expect them to have amazing creativity that just gets injected and it's going to solve your biggest business problems. But if you provide that, then AI can run with it. Second thing, um, you've got to provide detailed instructions with as much information as possible to provide clarity on the desired outcome that you want and any parameters that must be worked to. Because like a junior employee, AI will do a better job when you are clear on what you want. For example, rather than ask a, a, an artificial intelligent tool like Midjourney or uh, Dali for a picture of a deer for our book, <laughs> um, instead we could ask for a pencil drawn picture of a male muntjac deer running through a dark forest for a book cover. And it will provide a much more, um, uh, it'll provide a result that is much more likely to fit the outcome that we want. You can even test this by asking for a tool for give me a design for a landing page for a webinar for a company that provides uh, uh, security software or, or in our case for the, um, custom, uh, for the children's books provide me with a design for a website for a children's book website that focuses on forest animals or whatever. Um, there we go. That's my, that's my Alexa waking up and uh, <laughs> telling me that it doesn't know that. The uh, po uh, a point actually that uh, perhaps she's raising is that the, uh, the AI that's out there, some of it is really good and exciting. Some of it is pretty dumb. Really sorry about that, uh, Alexa, but you're going to get muted now. Um, so, uh, so we need to provide as much detail as we can in terms of the outcome. Uh, note that with tools like Alexa, the window of what you can provide is pretty narrow, whereas tools like ChatGPT and Midjourney and Dali and so on, you can provide a lot of information, like lines and lines and lines, um, uh, and even in the case of ChatGPT, full text. In the case of image tools, uh, you can even provide source images, like a link to say, here's an image, but I want something like this. So the more information that you can provide, the more likely you are that you're going to get a result at the end, just like a junior employee. You know, if you, if you want some text to be used as a press release, say that. If you want some text to be used as a social media post or uh, to form the foreword of a book or whatever it is, tell it that because the result and the way in which it's worded and the way in which it's created will be far better. So wherever you get those opportunities, provide that detail in the same way as you'd brief or you should be briefing a junior employee. Thirdly, provide feedback. The first result that you get is rarely perfect. You need to give feedback and make suggestions to guide the result towards your desired outcome. Um, just, just like with a junior employee, they're not going to get it right first time. You're going to need to provide some suggestions. So as an example, when I asked uh, ChatGPT for my dear story, it initially wrote me a story that mentioned the, uh, the fact that the names were anagrams of each other. It like made that part of the story. I didn't want that for this children's story. I wanted that a veiled, uh, smart little thing in the background. So I told it so. I said, don't, you know, don't mention that they're, they're anagrams. And in two, three seconds, it write, rewrites the entire thing, but this time uh, without mentioning that they're anagrams. However, this time the names weren't perfect, perfect anagrams for each other. So I had to correct it. And uh, after a couple more attempts of telling it, oh, this isn't an anagram of this one, it, it changed and it created something that met my requirements. But you have to expect that you're going to do that feedback. The power with AI is the speed with which you can get things changed. If you're working with a real junior employee and you say, OK, you know what you've written here is a, let's say, a dear story. You've written as a story is um, good, but I wasn't really thinking that we'd talk about the fact that it's anagrams. Can you rewrite it with that mind? If they then came back with something that's, again, not quite right, they've taken a considerable amount of time to put that together. Whereas when you're using AI, it's coming back instantly. 
but do expect to go through that feedback process. You can't, uh, if you expect just the first result, then A, you'll be disappointed, but B, you're missing an opportunity to level up the output so that it really does pop and stand out and provide something that's really valuable and can be really used uh, in your business rather than just whatever gets created. The fourth uh, thing that I want to recommend is uh, reviewing and editing even after giving feedback. You may find that there are still some changes that need to be made or, and I find this a lot, particularly with text-based ones like with ChatGPT, that you actually want to combine elements of previous attempts together. For example, in the Deer story, we might see that, actually, I really like the introduction, but then it went to the whole anagram thing, which I didn't want, but I like what it then did later, but I didn't like the intro that it did, so I need to combine that intro with this bit's content, and, and that's not uncommon that you're going to want to do that. In exactly the same way with a junior employee who provides you another piece of output and you go, yeah, I really like that, but actually I really liked how you did this and this other uh, point and bring those things together. So you will need to combine those. Um, an obvious example of this would be using AI for transcription. So if, if I take a podcast interview that I do, I don't assume that the AI will get it 100% correct. Um, and uh, a really important one is if you use it to do some research, so, for example, to go and uh, identify competitor pricing or something like that, or the price of a particular uh, item that I want, um, it may provide complete fiction disguised as fact. And I've tested this, for example, asking it about my her own software business pricing and saying, oh, what's the pricing of this? And it provides pricing information as if like, oh, yeah, this is what the pricing is, organized as if it's come straight from the website. But it's wrong. And I tell it it's wrong. And it apologizes and it says, oh, you know, maybe I'm out of date. Um, uh, you're correct that the plans aren't described as X, Y, and Z, they're A, B, C, here you are. But it's still giving me incorrect information. And when I tell it, it apologizes and it says, yep, sorry, here's, here's the updated one. Perhaps I'm out of date. And I, exp like, I tell it, it was, you're not out of date. It was never that price because I, I know. And so then it apologizes again, says, oh, maybe you should look on the website directly. Now, you imagine that as an experience for the junior employee. Firstly, that's not as good as perhaps junior employees you might expect. You know, if you had that from a junior employee, um, you probably wouldn't expect them in the organization very long. If they kept on stating things as fact and you get to a point where it's like, uh, actually, you go look yourself. But the point <laughs> um, is that you need to make sure you're reviewing it. You need to make sure that before you use something in the real world, that any facts that you're relying on, you go and check. Uh, you can't assume that they've got it right. And in fact, this is a, a dangerous area for, for some other areas of business. For example, let's say that you've got a massive legal agreement or a contract that you go, oh, I don't want to read 30 pages of this. Let me just chuck it into a tool like ChatGPT and say, summarize that for me it will do a really good job of summarizing it. That doesn't mean that it will, A, check that it's legal, B, make, uh, highlight anything that would be a big problem for you. Um, you know, it's, it's gonna miss those sorts of things. And so the dangerous thing is when we're using AI in places where there is information that is known and is, is based, you know, is factual or not factual, we need to be really, really careful with those, those sorts of things. So, um, check the result and make sure that you're happy that if you wrote it, that you can stand by it. Like, because at no point, if someone out there in the world challenges it, um, you can't be like those some big corporate companies where uh, they get pulled up on some marketing uh, gaffe that they've made, where they've uh, done a very problematic advert or something, or post social media post, and they blame it on a junior employee. Like don't don't be in that position. You need to be able to um, uh, back up and stand behind what you've put out there in the world. So make sure you review. Make sure that you edit before uh, stuff is going out. And then the the fifth point I want to share around uh, managing AI like a junior employee is to be prepared to abandon the work done. There are times when the work created by a junior employee is just too far away from what you want or misses some key context and you either need to rebrief them or do it yourself. The same is true for AI. Fortunately, in the case of AI, you get the result back in seconds, not days. And so, um, <laughs> so you haven't got that pain. 
And also you won't hurt its feelings, or at least not to my knowledge, if you don't use what it's created. It won't be upset that that social media post that, you cre that it created for you doesn't end up on your social feed. It won't be upset if of the five ideas it came up with, you decided that you weren't going to go with any of them and instead we're going to do something completely different. That isn't necessarily the case for a junior employee who you're going to do, need to do more on providing feedback before you can completely uh, abandon it. And then the, the sixth uh, uh, tip I want to give is not to over rely on them. Um, because a, uh, a limit, another limitation of AI, um, particularly the sort of more brand new tools, is that it can be pretty flaky at the moment. Um, the tools are changing a lot. They have many shortfalls. They can suffer with performance issues or sometimes even fail to be available at short notice. Um, just like a junior employee. I was one once, I remember, <laughs> not feeling very well on a, on a particular day at work and uh, as a result not being able to show up and so on. That's something that you expect from, from employees and unfortunately that happens uh, with AI too. Uh, over time, those things will get better, uh, of course. But hopefully you can see why I recommend thinking of AI as a junior employee. I think it really helps you identify the ways in which it can help you in your business because you can, you can think about what are the things that if I had a junior employee in my business right now, additional, that's not tied up in other parts of the business and fortunately is close to free. It isn't free. There's time that you need to put in and some tools out there, there's costs for or there are free tools now that will cost money in the future and you should bear that in mind. Um, so it's not 100% free, but it is massively low cost versus um, a normal hire. So uh, hopefully you can now see that you can think about AI as if as if you've got that resource available and what are the sorts of tasks that it could help you with. So I hope you see how that's a useful lens when thinking about how to get value from AI, but also some of those uh, limitations um, and how to deal with those. Now, in the future, many of the limitations that I've described will reduce, just like a junior employee who gains ability with experience. But don't be fooled into thinking that they won't need any creativity, feedback, or review from you uh, or your team to get really, really great results. You need that if you're going to maximize the power of AI, even as a junior employee. Now, I hope you found that session uh, useful. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, I'm running a webinar that shows you some real examples and goes into other ways in which you can look at artificial intelligence to identify practical ways to benefit from it and some exercises that you can use uh, to make it really relevant for your business, including uh, looking at specific opportunities and risks uh, that are the AI presents for your business. Um, it's coming up uh, pretty soon, so you can find out more and register at airmanual.link forward slash AI forward slash webinar, and we'll put the uh, link in the show notes as well. We've also got a free guide uh, if you prefer to read rather than attend uh, a live online training session. Uh, we've got a free guide for business leaders on uh, AI and ChatGPT and how to use it in your business and kind of help you get to grips with it. Uh, you can download that at airmanual.link forward slash AI forward slash ebook. Uh, and uh, thanks very much for joining live, Vanessa, and uh, love that you've said that this is uh, really useful. Thank you. And you say you haven't used it yet, but uh, going to explore it. And I love uh, that uh, your point around 100%, you have to take responsibility for your business and messaging, no matter what tools you use, completely agree. Uh, I'd love to see you on the uh, webinar that we're running. Uh, so uh, please do join that. But thanks very much, for Vanessa, for, for joining in today, uh, which leads me nicely into uh, thank you, uh, Vanessa, but also thank you all for, for joining me. Uh, those that joined me live, I can see there's quite a few of you on today, which is great, uh, but also uh, for listening to this as a recording. Um, if you did find this episode, useful, please do subscribe to our podcast. Uh, please do turn on notifications to get access to future episodes because uh, there's a lot of useful content that we'll be putting out there. Um, and also, please do me a favor, like share it with others, give it a like, leave a review. It only takes seconds for you to do, but it makes a huge difference uh, for me. So please do that. Uh, otherwise, until next time, have fun. <laughs>